Hello everyone. Um, in this video I update, I just want to go over a little bit of information about the recent assignments that you completed. Um, you all submitted a confidence assessment for me, um, and this was just a really quick survey, but it also highlights certain aspects of research and the research process that I want to highlight for you here. So this um, short survey, of course, was a survey. And one of the most important things to know about that is that a survey is usually a kind of self-report. It is asking someone to report on what they think. Um, and that is something different than behavior. So keep in mind, I asked you a bunch of questions about how confident you felt about a number of skills that we're going to be examining in this course throughout the summer. Um, and this will tell me, your responses to this, if I'm the researcher, tells me something about your confidence with these skills. It doesn't tell me directly about those skills themselves. It tells me what you think about your own abilities. That seems like a kind of subtle difference, but it really matters in research because if I want to make a statement about um, how strong your skills are, I can't use a survey like this to find out that information. I would have to devise some other method for collecting that data, perhaps a final exam or other assignments that I might use. So this survey, like most surveys, doesn't tell me about the explicit phenomenon, but it tells me what you think about that. Um, that's something we'll talk about more later on in the semester. So surveys are very useful for getting at what people think. This survey also utilized some different types of questions. You had some open-ended questions, and then you had questions that asked you to rate yourself from one to five. Those rating questions are questions that can provide me with quantitative data. That style of question you've probably seen before on other kinds of surveys that you may have done. And these we call Likert style questions. Um, and what quantitative data can do for me, and what it did for me in this case, is give me a general sense of where the class overall fits. It can give me a picture of a certain kind of pattern of a population. Um, and it does this through providing me with some numerical data. In this case, this sort of basic kind of survey and these basic questions, I can derive from them descriptive statistics. So I can figure out the mean, the median, the mode, and the range. This can tell me some information overall about how does the class uh, assess itself in relationship to these skills. But it doesn't quite yet get at maybe the meaning of those. Qualitative, qualitative data, which is the kind of data I collected through open-ended questions, um, can give me other kinds of information. Um, it can be surprising or unexpected. It can give me a little deeper understanding of how someone might feel about the information. To be fair, these kind of qualitative questions were pretty short and terse, so there wasn't a lot of information that I collected. Um, but it gives me a sort of different sense of the information. So one of the big differences is that, you know, people write in what they want here. And they might write in things that are different than what, you know, I have expected to find, which is from, you know, the questions that I provided here. Um, the other thing that you have to keep in mind is that with qualitative data, I'm not given sort of numbers to work with that give me a general description. So I have to figure out, well, what do I do with this information? Um, and one of the key things that people tend to do with qualitative data in research processes is to then look for common categories or ideas that they can use to organize and make meaning of the responses that they have or the information that they've gathered. So I'll give you a little picture of what that looks like. So here's just a couple of the questions from the class, the quantitative questions. So you can see here that, so you see that with these two questions, I get some information about the class overall. Um, I can see here, based on the mean, the median, the mode, and the range, 
um, the range tells me that there's a pretty wide variety of in in relationship to how confident students are um, in terms of their abilities and skill set. So while some people are very confident, that's the one, others are fairly not, not confident. Um, but I also can find some other interesting information. Uh, these were the two, the highest mean and the lowest mean of the questions. So that tells me that while students are very confident in general about using Google effectively and other search engines, that they don't feel as confident, nearly as confident, in their ability to effectively use the BSU library to find sources they, that they need. So I can use this numerical information to give me an overall picture of what the class looks like, and that's the way that quantitative data works. But qualitative data can also tell a bit of a story. And in this case, it gives me some ideas about what are the general categories or themes that students, um, you know, have in thinking about, you know, what they're worried about and excited about uh, in the course. So, you know, I haven't included all responses here. Instead, I've taken responses and sort of put them into categories that seem to be reoccurring. And so I see that most students, um, you know, in terms of what they worry about, they worry a bit about the course load, the time management and deadlines. Some students are worried more about their writing skills and issues with things like citations. Um, and some students just in general are worried a bit about the understanding the assignments and the material. Um, students were excited about improving research and writing skills. Overwhelmingly, this was the key thing that students mentioned. But a few people also mentioned choosing their own topic. Um, and a couple mentioned that they're not excited about anything in the course. <laughs> That's fair enough. And also interesting information, even though I didn't include it as a, a common uh, theme. It does tell me something important about the course. Um, and then lastly, the values that will help you in this class. Many people mentioned work ethic or issues of determination, certainly time management. And again, one of the things that qualitative data can do for us that quantitative data really can't is surprise us and provide us with unexpected responses. So one of my favorite unexpected responses um, was someone had meant pointed out that their guilt and feelings of guilt will be useful in being successful. It's not normally the way we talk about those issues, but I think that's, especially if you're sort of raised Catholic, this idea that I need to get my work done, and I feel guilty if I don't, can really be a motivator and one that I wouldn't have thought about on my own. So I think, you know, I wanted to share with you some of the information about this. It gives me some information overall. This is why we do research. So I can gather some information that I wouldn't otherwise have, in this case, about how the class in general feels about their abilities or skills in relationship to this material. And it illustrates some things that we'll talk more about in the class, things like um, these kinds of questions. I am most worried about from strongly agree to strongly disagree Likert style questions. We'll talk about those when we talk a bit about qualitative data. We'll talk about, uh, I mean quantitative data. We'll talk about the differences between quantitative and qualitative research. Um, and we'll talk about how different kinds of research methods, in this case a survey, can be useful for finding out different types of information. In this case, how people think or feel. I just wanted to say a quick thing about the browsing communication research assignment. Um, I thought people picked up on a lot of really good points in terms of when thinking about communication research overall. Um, what are the general sort of things you notice about the topics that people cover and the research that you sort of briefly encountered? There was some really good, inf good uh, points and I just want to highlight some of those. Um, several people mentioned things about sort of the form of the research. They noticed similar kind of formatting um, in terms of the articles and abstracts they looked through. They noticed that there was extensive research in examining the questions. Um, one student mentioned that, you know, it was interesting that the articles 
took the time to highlight a problem but didn't necessarily fix it. And that's very common in academic research. We don't always have the solutions, but we're motivated by some kind of problem we find interesting. Um, and this idea that it presents a kind of new way of looking at data or evidence. So unlike maybe research papers that you might have written in the past, which I, I kind of call all about papers, I want to find out all about Abraham Lincoln. So I go and I do all this research on Abraham Lincoln and I write a paper that's all about Abraham Lincoln. That how scholarly research really differs is that it gives you something new. It presents a new way of looking at things, a new kind of question, a new form of some, some new information, data, or evidence. Um, and that's one of the key things to keep in mind. This is what we would call thesis-driven research. So instead of being all about, it's research that comes from an argument perspective. It provides an argument. Um, many people mentioned a lot of variety, both in the topics that were covered and in the methods. Uh, someone noted that sometimes journals will have a common theme and each of the articles will have, will address that theme in some ways. That's not always the case, but that can happen. Um, and that, you know, sometimes there's quite a bit of examination of other cultures or comparison across cultures. That scholarly, that communication scholars also tend to be interested in current events and uh, current issues, including media, internet, and social media. Um, and that different journals that you read might be targeting different kinds of audiences. So all of the resources in uh, public relations review might have a kind of different scholar in mind than the ones published in uh, critical studies of media communication. And they do tend to address controversial issues. Um, and then just a cute few things. Please be sure to look at the comments. There's not a lot of comments on this assignment, but they will show you some of the ways in which your citations were incorrect. Um, these are some of the common things. Names, capitalization, use of DOI number instead of retrieve from. Make sure you include volume, issue, page number. So I didn't grade off on citations being incorrect this time, but that will happen in the future. So please look at that. I gave you some indications of where things might be off. And you can go to Owl Purdue website if you want information about how to do that. Um, and then make sure you follow all of the assignment guidelines. Um, that's just a heads up for future assignments as well. Um, one last note just about the group discussion. Uh, really good conversations. It was fun to read those. I thought people gave great advice about how to evaluate sources and think about determining the difference between fake, fake news and not fake news. Um, I it, The group discussion grade can be a little funky because I only have one column for all the group discussions. So if you were a discussion leader this week, Remember, the discussion leaders will be identified in the de detailed schedule. Um, then at this point, you could have earned up to 11 points. If you were only a respondent this week, you could have earned up to three points. So that grade will look like you're not doing well because it includes the points for the entire semester. But you should know that if you were a group discussion leader and you have 11 points, then you have 100%. If you were a respondent and you have three points, you have 100% of that grade. 